dog loves chasing sparks. It's hilarious. <laughs> she sits there and bites at him. She'll do this all night. Oh, there's one. Get it. <laughs> I don't know why she does that. It's funny, she does that uh, when I was helping my neighbor build that fence. If I was running a grinder or something, she'd come over and try to bite the sparks off of that. When I'm running a torch, she'll try to bite the sparks off of that. When I'm welding, she'll come up and try to bite the sparks. Sometimes she gets in my way. <laughs> she'll come over and be like running into me, hitting it. <laughs> I, I don't get it. <laughs> it's funny. She loves it though. Well, I had so much fun last night <laughs> with a bonfire. I decided I'd do it again tonight. So today's the next day. It's Wednesday or uh, Tuesday rather. Um, so I was surprised actually how much I was able to burn off all this green stuff that I've been cutting. Uh, I was able to get a lot of it cleared. <clears throat> that fire was off over that way. Uh, this got kind of big accidentally. I, turns out I can uh, supply a lot more fuel <laughs> uh, than it can burn. So there's trees right up here above it. You can see them. I don't want to catch those on fire. So slow them down just a little bit here. I'm sit back. You can see over here, it's starting to kind of burn the leaves underneath all those sticks. It's no big deal. We're nice and slow. Um, they'll creep out once they get out of the sticks where I can stomp that out. I will. So, just watching it. Letting it all kind of settle down. The, uh, coal bed from last night was actually still had, uh, embers in it when I got out here. I saw it and I was like, oh, I'll just drive through it to help break it up. It kicked fire up everywhere. I was like, oh. <laughs> so, it was a nice big, uh, coal bed. Much like what I've got going on here. So, yeah, it was a lot more burned down, of course. But, uh, yeah, so uh, I've talked about before how we don't have a lot of time, you know, when, when the, the sun goes down this time of year so soon. And days are getting longer every day, which is great. Uh, that helps me out. But get home from work, run around, take care of chores real quick. And then uh, the sun goes down, and I kind of don't have anything left to do. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be out here running a chainsaw trying to clear this lane in the dark. That doesn't make any sense. That's, that's not safe at all. Uh, but... On the weekends, if I just really get after it and drop a whole bunch of stuff where I've got a bunch of this that I can burn, and there's there's dead wood everywhere out here to help, you know, start the fire and, and keep it all stoked and, and going, well, the sun goes down, this is the perfect time to sit out here, enjoy a, a bonfire, you know, have a, a beer, <laughs> or a couple of them, or a few of them, whatever. And, uh, oh, see, that already went out by itself. So this looks like a mess. And it kind of is. Uh, it's This is not super dangerous. This stuff, it, it's all kind of damp. So you can kind of scrape the little bit off the top to get the fire going, the leaves and stuff. But uh, they don't burn very fast. So you got to get a big pile of them to, to get it good and hot. Anyway, though, I can sit out here. I can enjoy this bonfire and uh, have a beer. Last night I cooked some, some hot dogs on it. That was fun. I uh, ran out of hot dogs, so I don't have any for tonight, or I would. I'm a little bit hungry, but eh, it's all good. I'll eat tomorrow. And side benefit, I'm actually getting work done. So all this stuff, you know, that you see on the fire here, all this scraggly stuff, this is all just the the little bits and pieces. It's not good for firewood. It's not worth keeping. Um, and it turns into a real chore to walk through it as I'm, you know, cutting down more trees and stuff like that. So if I get after it and just drop a whole bunch of stuff, get it out of my way, and get it all cut up to where it's manageable like this, where I can carry it over and throw it on a fire. And then, you know, I made one over that way last night. I got this one tonight. Tomorrow night, move off that way. Um, yeah, throughout the week, the weather's perfect for this. Might as well enjoy it if I got to burn it off anyway. And then added benefit, I can go around and collect up some of that dead wood and burn it. I talked about before, you know, if, if you don't burn uh, the woods fairly frequently, then it just burn it, it builds up a, a ton of fuel. 
and it's super dry, it lights super easy, it burns hot and fast, and that's how fires get out of control, is when you have a whole bunch of that. So I can go through here and, and just keep gathering all that up and burning it as I go. So then when I actually roll a fire through here, I'll have a lot of that removed. Uh, that's the idea anyway. Um, yeah. And I get to sit here and have fun in the evenings and enjoy a fire. So pretty good deal all the way around, I'd say. So here's tonight's fire. Not pretty comfortable leaving that right where it's at. Kind of screwed up. I uh, I put a little bit more on there than I probably should have. I got to go to bed. Got to get up in the morning. But, uh, yeah. I ain't going anywhere. It'll be all right. All right, here. Cutting up more trees. You can kind of see my lane that I've cleared through there. So this is the direction I just came from. And that's where I'm going. So give you kind of a before look. I'll come back here in a little bit once I've <laughs> progressed through there, but um, when you're cutting big trees like this, you know, everything about running a chainsaw is a little bit dangerous. It just kind of comes with it, you know, I'm mean, just the concept. It's a pretty powerful motor running a, a chain made out of knives, basically. But the chainsaw itself is not actually uh, what hurts most people. Um, most accidents are actually the tree. So I think, uh, I don't know, maybe people don't think about that sometimes, and sometimes I don't think about it. But, uh, and nothing happened, I'm fine. But, um, saw just ran out of gas, I gotta go get more. It's cutting this one though, you can see where I cut my wedge out right here. Well, I cut that from this side, and it's on a bit of an angle, right? Just me not, not paying close enough attention. So when I came and cut this, I actually cut the, underneath the wedge. That's, that's not safe. Uh, what can happen is the, that tree, when it starts to fall, since you've cut down below where your wedge was, it can pop out and, uh, get you. So before I even cut this one down though, I did a little bit of planning and I cleared myself enough space. It's still, it's pretty messy. I probably should have done a better job of, of cleaning that up before I cut this big one. But I uh, cleared myself enough room that I could get away from it. So as soon as it starts to fall, you know, set the saw down and, and back up and let it do its thing. But what you want to do though is, is come in and cut above your wedge and you can even cut down at an angle and that'll leave kind of a uh, kick plate to keep the, the tree from shooting backwards. They can go to the sides as well, you know, just depends. And then when you're actually cutting up all the limbs, something you got to be aware of is, you know, if it's bent, well, the, it's basically just a spring. And it can have a lot of energy behind it, so you just got to be cognizant of that, where you're standing and how you're standing and how you're actually making the cut to keep that, that log from coming back and hitting you. And that can cause kickbacks as well, you know, where the saw actually ends up hurting you. But... Anyway, just a thought. I was thinking about it. Thought I'd share it. So you guys probably know that. I'm by no means an expert, you know, sawyer, but uh, something to be aware of. Get sloppy and make cuts like that uh, can be dangerous. So anyway, that's where I'm going. So I'll go get gas and let's get back to it. Okay, so just got done talking about this. <laughs> uh, I wanted the tree to fall this way. Looking at it though, I kind of knew it wasn't going to be easy. I was hoping I could just push it and give it a little bit of lean, but it didn't do it. So if I had planned this out better, I would have taken out all this stuff. So now I've got this tree stuck on this other tree. So if I cut that one down, this one's fallen as well. So the only place I can get to cut that down is underneath the one that's leaning. So that's what I'm talking about is these trees more likely to hurt you. So it's no big deal. I, I can figure a way out of it but um, I'm gonna leave these just how they are and go clear back here behind it for a little ways <laughs> just to get all that stuff out of my way and then we'll come back and deal with these here in a minute so <laughs> cows are out uh, is this gate is wide open I don't know how that happens I didn't even come through that gate yesterday so uh, I don't know that's weird uh, pretty sad looking hay bales now that sucks so <laughs> No big deal. Uh, I'll still be able to feed them one way or another, but uh, what a mess. All right, so to get them back in, here's the plan. I got some of them to follow me. I've got another gate up by the road over here, which is open right now. So I went and I closed off the other gates and I'm pretty sure I've got them all in here still. 
um, kind of a bad deal because they, they could have gotten off actually into the woods and just <laughs> be lost. But uh, I think I've got them all uh, to get a good count on them. Some of them are still in the pasture they're supposed to be in, but anyway, we'll worry about that in a minute. Uh, first things first, I just need to get all these girls back on this side of the fence. So drive by with the hay bale, holler at them and get their attention. I think they'll follow me and uh, drive them right back into this pasture. So some of them followed me earlier just on the four-wheeler, but anyway, see if it works. All right, got one straggler. Looks like she's about to figure it out, though. So I'm going to go around uh, this way. <laughs> All zoomed in. Um, and then I'll, I'll come around and shout her and get her to come on in. All right, got them all. The nice part about uh, unrolling those hay bales like that is it gets them all kind of lined up, makes them easier to count. So, um, see a few of them kind of follow me around. There's a little white calf over there stuck on the other side of the fence. See him? He's been running back and forth. I tried to help him, but he'll figure it out. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, now that's done, let's get on with the rest of the day. <laughs> all right, so. That's what that looks like now. This is that stump that I was standing by the other day. Um, I ended up kind of getting carried away and uh, worked all the way till it was dark, so I had to come back um, later to show you this. But so anyway, if you remember, it was that one right there had fallen, was leaning on this one. Um, so I'd said I was going to go back there and clear some stuff behind it to get that out of my way, so I could drop them. Well, whenever I cut this one, it fell right through here, and while I was back off over here cutting the limbs up on it at some point this one just fell over and it happened to land right there where I was standing when I cut that one down so kind of a close call I guess could have been um, so when I'm looking at it um, you know I burned all the little scraggly stuff off kind of got this cleaned up I probably need to go ahead and take this tree out as well and then all that I've got left is basically just these little bitty things so um, I'll come back to the back room and just kind of scrape them all out I just got to get it fixed so I'm about to stop on this for a little bit and go do that um, because and I find out what happened uh, the guy that I bought this from used to have access to a sweet uh, tree saw on a uh, skid loader and right before that was going to get sold see I've been working that way well he came out here and all these trees these big ones that are on the ground you know that one and um, a lot of this stuff he had come through here and cleared a bunch of this planning on turning it back into pasture basically doing what I'm doing and so see the way these are growing so that's a used to be a tree right and the same there that one used to be a tree well he never came back and followed through and uh, killed the stumps and so now everywhere you see these little clusters of trees those used to be you know one tree you can kind of see there that one's falling down because he cut it growing out of the stump it's just that nasty mess so I came through here now the good part is those are fast and easy to cut down and so I mean I've cleared a long ways that way pretty quickly but I got to looking at it and really I'm gonna have to come back and rip those stumps out with the backhoe anyway I don't think there's any point in me fighting through all this just with a chainsaw when I can just pull the whole thing out with the backhoe so um, a lot of this area you know you can see he left a few big ones um, but you can see other than like that and, and you know all this stuff that's short like this This is just three years of growth up out of the stumps from from where he had cut all those down So I think what I will do is stop out here um, I'm gonna go get the the fuel pump rebuilt on the backhoe and then um, I'll get it out here and instead of cutting all these up I'll just come through here and rip all these little stumps out all these little trees that are in my way and I'll actually have a pretty nice big open area back here cleared out I think by the time I, I finish what he started three years ago so um, yeah that's where I'm at so that'll be it for this one guys so thanks for watching we'll see you next time and stay tuned near in the future will be the uh, backhoe fuel pump rebuild <music>
I'll go get some tools, pull this off. I'll take it to work with me tomorrow. We'll clean it off really good and uh, get it back on. Um, yeah, and try it again. I don't think it's actually got a hole in it. I'll check it tomorrow though, and we'll see once I air it back up. But I, I think it was just leaking through the bead. So, all right, I'm gonna go get uh, some tools. <laughs> 